How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. When I went to the Hamburee a couple of months ago, or a month ago, I picked up this Kenwood THF6 Tribander with Wideband Received, and it's pretty beat up. I got it at a great deal, and it works perfectly, but as you can see, you know, the logo's been cleaned off of it. The keypad's really good, um, but it's just chipped all to heck, and I was just gonna use it, because honestly, it's still a functioning radio. You can see a little bit closer here. Pretty, pretty bad, but it works fine. It's a, it's a great little tri-band, uh, wide-band receive radio. But a guy named Clint Bradford, uh, he's the proprietor of WorkSats.com. He sent a comment that, hey, there's a company called Pack Parts. Pack Parts uh, available on the internet, and they've got a lot of old stock for radio equipment. So I figured I'd give it a, a, a shot. So it turns out that they did have parts, and I picked up a couple of things. I got a new faceplate, and I got a new rubber door for the battery. And that was basically the problem with the radio, was those two parts. And I got some free packing material. So let's take a look at this, see how it came out. I don't know what the deal is with the company. I think it's just new old stock that they have. But um, you can see that is that is fantastic. That is really really nice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take apart this guy, put the new faceplate on. Good news, this is very easy to do. Let me show you. So with the battery disconnected. <laughs> There's a call sign there, that's nice. Uh, you do need to pull the volume knob off and the, I guess this is the volume, that was the tuning knob on top of that. And take your time with this because you don't want to damage it. You can actually break this post I saw online. And what you got to do, and the best way I accomplish doing this, I'm sure there's specialty tools you can get to do this, but I just took uh, needle nose pliers and just kind of got the, got the whole thing turning. This one's a little bit easier. You want to do this before you remove the screws. Uh, that will solve you some headache later. So I think the parts in total were, you know, a couple, couple of a uh, couple of twenties. I think it was actually under thirty dollars for the faceplate and the uh, plastic door. And the plastic door actually connects here, so we will need to connect that before we slap this guy on. But to take the radio out, it's really simple. With the screws undone, everything disconnected here, just kind of give it a pull, and the radio slides right out. Now, we will need to take the speaker out, but that's all there is to getting the radio out. It's pretty simple. So we liberated the speaker and the keypad. The keypad's in good working order. Um, but the speaker was a bit of a problem, <laughs> and it was in there pretty pretty tightly with the uh, whatever this glue is. So now I've got to re-solder the, the lead, the positive lead kind of came off, these are really tiny leads, and then I've got to affix it into the, uh, the, new, the new case, which it goes something like that in the new case. Hopefully that did it, we'll find out here shortly. All right, so let's get the door on, or the uh, charge port door. like so keypad kind of just mashes in there and let's get that speaker in place Okay, a bit of a press fit check. Kind of not going in well. So I forgot to harvest some of the buttons off the side here, so 
basically there's an outer PTT button slides into place and this inner goes over the top something like that so this wasn't seating correctly and I don't know why that was so let's try this again Okay, nice and clicky. Feels right. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's power it on really fast to make sure it's working still. Okay. I'm gonna put an antenna on. Okay, quick antenna mount before we put the dials back on. Ooh, no audio. Mmm. That's not good. We got a problem. It deserves mention if you're going to try this, but the speaker right here, there's a blue line that was done at the factory. And it's likely that it is the keying location for where that speaker needs to be lined up because if you look at the body, um, you can tell that there's something going on here with this cutout, um, the way it's in and the way it lines up. I don't fully get it, but I'm having problem with the audio, so I'm going to find some more pictures of this, because when it comes together, right, you're going to, I need to find some pictures of this opened up and taken apart. Okay, so I consulted uh, a couple of images online of this open, and yeah, it's, it's kind of like canted. Now, also important to keep in mind, it's got a B and an R right here, so you need to make sure you're plugging this in correctly. It's possible that I damaged this speaker um, when I was trying to get it out. So we may have to get a replacement speaker, but that's the uh, that's the information on it. We can probably find that online as well. Problem's going to be getting a connector that fits, right? So let's try to seat this. You slide these guys in first. Oh, no keypad. <laughs> it's like the third time I've done that. So really kind of go in there and squeeze this so you get it real well seated there is a seal a rubber grommet on the outside so you want to make sure that you really kind of work that grommet make sure you got your connectors out of the way all your buttons are still working feels good okay that's boy i hope this works nope so uh the speaker is likely bad i did plug it into headphones and the audio is there so we have a bad speaker so it looks like I'm going to have to look online and see if I can find one of those. So they do have it. It's a Kenwood 881W74, uh, not in stock. <laughs> it orders shipped within two to four days. That is interesting. So um, I am going to take a look at that really quick. So, a couple uh, days later, I have a replacement speaker just to try this out. And I need to get this wire and reuse it. So just heat it up. So interestingly enough, this uh, pack parts, this is uh, JVC Kenwood. You can see this is uh, like new old stock. It's pretty good. Look at that. Made in China, in case you didn't know. Ooh, that's clean. So a bit of a comparison. Those things are basically identical. Okay. Ooh, all right, let's get all this stuff in the way. That's very good. All right, so two little tabs of solder there. Nope, 
Jeez, powerful, man. Those wires are small. Okay, hopefully that's it. I'm really hoping that was the, the problem, is that I just damaged the speaker irreparably. So let's uh, take that guy, get him in here. Okay, make sure you're paying attention here. Red and black wires, it says black and red. Make sure you're doing it right. Red and black, okay. So let's test it out first. Ugh. All right, well, let's just test it since we got it here. Oh, good. Oh, I'm very, ha I'm very happy to hear that. And this is a, this has an AM coil on it. Okay. So let's wrap this build up because I've had this thing open so many times. I want it to be done. Ah, the speaker came out! <laughs> All right. Let's check this again real fast, because we did have the speaker come out. All right. Back in Wilmington. All right, so since we got that, it's all up and running, it's working. I think I'll take ownership of this radio now. So want to thank again Clint, thank you so much for telling me about pack parts. Uh, unfortunately now I'm going to blow a lot more money there as I go look for used radios that are available on the market that are, you know, beat up. Uh, cosmetically nothing wrong with them or cosmetically they're all beat up but working wise work great. Oh, I'm going to totally go to packparts.com and check that out. Again, not affiliated at all with me but I like it when you can find new old stock. Put that in the bookmarks and keep it because it will help you out, I promise. Anyway, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I'll talk to you soon. Take it easy.